Individuals may not think of themselves as having to be culture warriors. The issue, though, is that progressives are making everyone to have to choose a side on these types of issues. We're no longer in the position where we can just kind of sit back and take a position of neutrality because progressives aren't doing that. You're watching Restoring America, where we shine a light on the fundamental values of this country and all the reasons why they're worth saving. This week, we're going to talk about the crucial cultural battles that even some Republicans are unwilling to face. I'm Kaylin B. White, and this is Restoring America. The conservative movement has been trying to walk a fine line on hotly debated issues such as abortion and gender ideology. But the result has been confusion and even frustration among many on the right who feel the movement is slipping away from its moral roots. On abortion, for example, the Republican Party adopted a platform this year that was much more moderate than in years past. Former President Donald Trump's position on the issue is also more moderate than other Republican candidates. Some have argued this is politically necessary. And there's no doubt that that is at least partly true. As Trump would say, in order to make change, you first must win, and he wants to win. But cultural conservatives are worried that if the Republican Party moves to the center now, it might never move back to the right. And that would be a blow to conservatism and to the country. After all, though the U.S. certainly encourages and accepts a wide variety of beliefs, there are certain timeless values our society and system of government depend on. If conservatism isn't willing to defend those values, then who else is? My guest today is going to break all of this down and talk about the future of cultural conservatism and the choices the GOP must now make. But before we get to him, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and for more, head to WashingtonExaminer.com. With me today is Andrew Walker, an ethics and public theology professor at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary and a fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center. Andrew, thanks so much for being with us today. You have written a lot about the culture war debates and about how the choice we as conservatives face is very clear. And this seems especially true in this election cycle. We just learned that Vice President Kamala Harris has chosen Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz as her running mate, which means that this ticket on the Democratic side both candidates have long histories of being rabid leftist culture warriors. So why does this matter for conservatives, even those who might not tend to engage in culture war debates? I think this matters because individuals may not think of themselves as having to be culture warriors. The issue, though, is that progressives are making everyone to have to choose a side on these types of issues. We're no longer in the position where we can just kind of sit back and take a position of neutrality because progressives aren't doing that. And when we look at what has transpired uh, at the top of the Democratic ticket, uh, we are seeing by far um, the furthest left ticket in the history of the United States. It's honestly one of these situations where you can't fathom the ticket getting any further to the left than what it has previously been. But here we are in 2024, and the ticket is even further than in, in any previous point in American history. Absolutely. And on the other side of this race, we have the Republican ticket with former President Donald Trump and Senator J.D. Vance. And Trump and Vance have taken more moderate positions on cultural issues than many conservatives would prefer, especially on issues like abortion. What do you make of Trump's move to the center on these issues? Well, on the one hand, I have to say, I think it's a it's a tragic mistake to take any effort to weaken the Republican platform pertaining to life and marriage. Uh, at the same time, I understand why the pivot uh, that they've made um, and, and why it's happening, because they're trying to form an electoral coalition. Again, I think it's a mistake. I think regardless of where the winds go, what the demographics say, what social conservatives are concerned about is upholding truth. It means truth is something that is always going to be true, regardless of where the winds are blowing. And so, uh, you know, when we compare where the Republicans are on issues uh, that social conservatives care about, it's still a vast, vast difference from where the Democratic Party's platform is on these issues. I think what I would encourage social conservatives to do is to never give up the fight. Silence never wins. Uh, we understand that there are some setbacks currently right now, but it means we have to keep showing up and making the argument regardless of the circumstances or the consequences. Absolutely. And let's take a step back for a moment and think big picture here. 
why do the culture war debates matter for all Americans, regardless of their religious beliefs and political affiliations? Why is it so important that we continue to talk about these issues? Well, coming at this from a biblical worldview as a Christian theologian and ethicist, uh, the reason we care about these social issues is because they're not preeminently just political issues. We think these are issues tied to human flourishing, and we have to have the types of laws in place that recognize the truth uh, about what human nature is uh, and how we are meant to form and uh, flourish in society. And so we have to constantly be making these arguments because, again, uh, these are not issues uh, or positions that we hold um, as, as matters of what truth are that are going to be changing from one culture to the next. These are truths that we think are true in all times and all cultures and all places because they're tied to um, essential truths of, of what we think is true of a biblical worldview, but they're also um, an American worldview. When we have the Declaration of Independence talking about our rights come from a creator, uh, the pursuit of happiness, life, liberty. These are, yes, political realities, but they're much more than just political realities. They're moral realities, they're ethical realities, and I think at their ultimate, they are a theological reality. Absolutely. Well, Andrew, thanks very much for joining us. This is a debate that is going to extend far beyond just this 2024 election, so we appreciate you chatting with us. And for more exclusive interviews, breaking news, and conservative views, be sure to go to WashingtonExaminer.com.